I wondered if I could take a note from our introduction and just say one thing that so many observers appreciate is that he is someone who matches actions and words that a critique of religion is often its hypocrisy, but he is someone who puts what he wants to see happen with all humanity into action personally. If you could first say just, how did he get like this? How did he turn into the person? Uh, what ethical sources, what influences is he drawing on to, to do it like he does it? Well, first of all, it must be said that to see the Pope so sure of himself on an international stage has been, after his election, a surprise for many because as Archbishop of Buenos Aires, he wasn't traveling a lot. He almost doesn't speak foreign languages. He speaks Spanish and Italian. He tried hard here in the United States. And, um, but there is one reason for this um, sense of uh, secureness which he has uh, on the international stage. Uh, and it comes from the fact that this is the first pope born in a million inhabitants town. The, the night when he was elected and he went to the balcony, he spoke to the crowd saying, the brethren's cardinal called me from the end of the world. This is, shows the sense of humor of Pope Francis, but actually he's not coming from the end of the world. This is the first pope who wasn't born in a village, in a Bavarian village, in an Italian village, in a uh, German village. It makes a great difference if you are born in a little reality where almost all people is Catholic, or you are born in a town, in a city like Buenos Aires, which has a core of three, four millions, but the greater Buenos Aires is made of 14 million inhabitants. So he comes from a mega town where all economical and social situation and layers are present, where there are so many people from different ethnic roots, uh, not only Spanish, there are Italians, uh, Swedish, German, Arabs, Russian. There is a great variety of religious beliefs and of cultural beliefs. Mm -hmm. There are Catholic, Protestants, free churches, Jews, Muslims, and a strong anti-clerical Freemasonry uh, tradition. So it is a man who was born and raised in a global society framework. And this explains why when he speaks, he doesn't speak only to Catholics. He speaks, and not only to Christians, he speaks beyond religious borders. He speaks to men and women as they are in contemporary society. And for him, he never, for instance, he underlined it, he never thought that an atheist, non-believing in God, was a sort of lame duck. Of course, uh, this also helps him to uh, be present on the crossroads of the great problems of the modern society. When he speaks about uh, inequality, when he speaks about the cry of the excluded, of the marginalized, of the outcast, it is not something he has learned reading a report which has given him by some secretary. It is not something he has read in newspapers or see on TV. When he became archbishop, he left the, not only the residence of the Argentinian uh, bishops, he, he decided to live uh, at the last store of the Curia uh, in a two-flat apartment. Already there, he chose a very simple life. But he renounced the chauffeur and he renounced the car. So he was using day by day only the metro and the bus. And he was going every week to these shanty towns, to these slums which are around Buenos Aires, and which are really towns of 40, 50, 60 million, uh, 60,000 people, uh, full of violence, full of solidarity, full of sense of religiousness, but also uh, places where there are drug dealers, where there are feuds between clans, where houses are burnt in clashes, 
where uh, boys come to th their parish priests and hug him, but in the same time they have the gun in the jacket. This makes it why Pope Francis, speaking to the US Congress or to the UN Assembly, when he says that there are great social issues, he always underlines it's not abstract issues. It goes about men and women, real men and real women who are living, striving, and suffering. Mm -hmm.